Show me your eyes. We are here with Christian Filfork. That's right. I said it right. Let's start with the basics of what is an SMI tracker and how have you integrated it into a Vive? We have integrated cameras in, in the Vive. Uh, we modified the optomechanical design, the cameras behind the lens, between the lens and display, looking through the lens into the eye, a few little infrared LEDs around the, the lens cap, that's all you need and where we process then the, the images and create eye tracking data such as eye position, uh, gaze position, gaze angle, map gaze, uh, everything. Look at it! Look! Ah. Oh. Have you noticed a certain threshold of refresh rates for these eye trackers for it to be good and relevant for social interactions? If we talk about the, the, the gaze interaction or social presence and the copying eye movements into the avatar, even 30 hertz would be fully sufficient. 60 hertz, is, it's, it's okay, uh, can also be done with 30 hertz. Higher frame rates are important when you do <clears throat> analysis of, of little eye movements, what a lot of our researchers are doing, and it's it's a good vehicle also to, to show foveated rendering with some oversampling while uh, it's not been synchronized with the rendering pipeline yet. At OC3, Michael Abrash was talking about the, the issues of, of eye trackers or how people have some so such different eyes. How are you, you, know, how are you battling uh, people's eyes and actually making it a universal eye tracker? We're in the business for 25 years <clears throat> and our Algorithms are already at the stage where it works for 98% of all people. And our eye tracking platform has been validated with 250,000 users already. So um, problems he, he mentioned um, are being solved in our platform already. So it turns out Michael Abrash is wrong at OC3, or perhaps that's what SMI says. <laughs> We're excited to see more. That was a very compelling demo. Thank you, Christian. Okay, thank you very much.